Council has ad, uh, asked Councilman Shadid and, and I think Councilman Greenwell had both had some discussions about uh, the use tax and and uh, how what is the use tax and and who should be paying for it and and, and uh, with that we have Bob Ponkiller from the uh, our city treasurer here today to uh, fill us in a little bit about the mysterious use tax. Good morning. We'd like to start the presentation this morning with a short video. Let's buy this TV online. Do we need a 72-inch screen? Yeah. You better keep the receipts that you can pay the use tax, you know? You say something? No. Honey, do we have to pay taxes on it? Yes, you will owe a use tax on that TV you're buying online. But don't take it from me. I'm just the elephant in the room. The law requires you pay a use tax on certain out-of-state or online purchases for use in Oklahoma. Visit tax.ok.gov for more information. Peanuts. Good morning. Bob Ponkella, City Treasurer. I also have with me this morning Davis Perrier. He's one of our assistant city treasurers. The video you just saw is one that's, uh, that was created by the Oklahoma Tax Commission. And what the, uh, what the main character in the video was saying, of course, is that use tax is an elephant in a room, and which is true. I mean, because um, what that would mean is that it's something that's misunderstood, not fully understood by most folks. And it's also something that folks just aren't really interested in talking about. So we, we've been asked to just do a short presentation this morning to give you an idea of of what use tax is, you know, when does it apply, and in short, uh, how is use tax paid? Basically, uh, use tax is a companion to sales tax. Um, all of us know that if we go into a store here in Oklahoma City, we're going to be required to pay sales tax on our purchases. Well, use tax is very much the same. It's a uh, it's again a companion to sales tax, but it applies to any purchases that are made from out of state. If you make a purchase from out of state, uh, bring, those per bring those goods into Oklahoma and you use those goods here, then a use tax will, will apply to that purchase. Uh, a lot of things, or a lot of times what, uh, what most folks relate to use tax, of course, is online purchases. And the thing that most folks don't understand is when you make a purchase online, it's not a tax-free purchase. There are statutes in place that require that you pay a tax on that purchase. Uh, basically, use tax is, again, required for any purchases that were made outside of Oklahoma. Uh, there are certain uh, exceptions to that rule, meaning if a company has a brick-and-mortar location, often referred to as a nexus within Oklahoma, they're actually required to collect our taxes on that purchase. We have a sample invoice here of a purchase that was made online. Uh, this particular purchase was, purchase was made from Best Buy. As you, you and I are aware, we do have several Best Buy locations in Oklahoma City. Uh, as a result, Best Buy would be required, even on an online purchase, to collect that sales tax and remit that to the Oklahoma Tax Commission on our behalf. Uh, you'll see in this, the circled version of the invoice here at the bottom that sales tax was paid on this purchase of 1682. Bob, Some, can I ask a question oh, about I'm that sorry. right now? How do those dollars, how does that 1682 get to us? The tax is collected by the seller, and in, and in most cases, they'll go ahead and uh, remit that directly to the tax commission tax commission will then divvy that out to each of the cities. Oklahoma State Tax Commission. Okay, so Saks Fifth Avenue, New York City store, but has right. a location in Tulsa. Right. And now has one at the outlet mall. Right. Those taxes are collected. They would actually have a permit with the Oklahoma Tax Commission okay. because they do have a location in Oklahoma. 
and they would, because of that, any online purchases would be set up to remit those taxes to Oklahoma City. Okay. I have also had an example where a retailer that did not have a bricks and mortar location in the state, however, collected tax. Right. And that's actually my next point. Okay. That's a good lead in. Uh, there are certain companies that do, that are online retailers that have voluntarily elected to collect our local taxes. Uh, there's about 1,100 companies that have elected to do so. Uh, just Oklahoma City alone, that amounted to about $3.8 million last year. So that, that would be that situation that you just described. Okay. Now, very similar to sales tax, uh, where, as we're, we're all aware, depending on where you make that purchase, uh, that would be the tax rate that, that applies. Um, in most situations for most citizens within Oklahoma City, it would be the uh, 8.375 rate. Uh, we also have a table here that shows that the rate in Oklahoma City is 8.375 because the county, Oklahoma County, does not charge a use tax. However, some of the surrounding counties into which Oklahoma City extends do charge a use tax. So if you live in one of those outside counties, then your, your use tax rate may differ just slightly. So we've talked about what is use tax and when does use tax apply. Um, as, as we mentioned earlier, if you make a purchase from out of state and sales tax is not charged on that purchase, then use tax is going to be still due uh, by the consumer. So if you make a purchase online uh, and again the retailer does not collect sales tax on it, then that ultimate responsibility for paying that use tax would be uh, falls on you as a consumer. Again, we have another sample invoice here. Uh, in this particular case, a purchase was made from Keurig, uh, as, which does not have a location, a nexus in Oklahoma. Uh, and you can see at the bottom of this particular invoice that uh, there was no sales tax charged on this purchase. Again, we talked about, you know, in regard to use tax, uh, the majority of this uh, relating to online and catalog purchases. I also want to point out that businesses are also subject to use tax. In the event that they make a purchase from out of state, bring it into Oklahoma and use those goods here in Oklahoma City, they actually also have to pay use tax. A, um, a good example of that would be uh, hospitals. Uh, hospitals regularly will buy uh, some specialized equipment from out of state, they'll bring it into their hospital and have it installed. At that point in time that that equipment is installed, that use tax is due by the hospital as, as a consumer. Uh, and we do regularly see businesses like hospitals uh, on a regular basis remitting that use tax directly to the tax commission. So we've talked about it, when it applies, uh, what is use tax, um, I guess the, the, the next question would be, well, how is use tax paid? Again, we've talked about businesses remitting directly to the tax commission. Uh, in the case of individuals, most of us are aware that uh, you can pay your use taxes through your uh, Oklahoma state income tax return. Uh, we have a return 511 copy here, and you can see on line 20, uh, you're given the op opportunity to report your use tax on your purchases. Now, the Tax Commission has a couple of options for this. Uh, if you keep your records throughout the year, you know exactly uh, how many non-tax purchases you made. Uh, there's a schedule where you enter th this into uh, and it calculates the amount of use taxes due. You enter it into this line here. The other option is if, uh, if you don't retain your records, you're not sure exactly the, the dollar amount of the purchases you made throughout the year, uh, you're provided an opportunity on another schedule to estimate uh, your use taxes and again, calculate the use tax amount here. Another option that's fairly recent is one that uh, uh, the tax commission has made available on our website. Uh, there's a web page that's available now that where you can pay your use tax is pretty much like businesses do on uh, and as their incurred basis. Um, you can log into this website here. 
Uh, you enter your contact information as the consumer. Uh, enter the amount of the purchase that you may have just made online that tax was not charged. And what happens is the website will actually calculate the, the use tax that's due. You provide your bank information at the, at the bottom of the form and the tax mission will go, actually go out and draft your account for that use tax at that point in time. We've had a number of um, education incentives, uh, initiatives, I'm sorry, uh, over the past few months. Uh, one of the things that we've done is we've included information in our employee in, uh, newsletter. Uh, we felt that if we can make our employees more aware of both sales and use tax, you know, that gives us, you know, several thousand boots on the ground to be on the lookout for purchases that they're making. We've also included a brief uh, article with the help of our public information office in the uh, utility newsletter, your water bill newsletter. Uh, you'll see that in January. Uh, again, basically bringing that awareness to our citizens so they're also aware of what to look for, uh, you know, and to kind of urge them to shop in Oklahoma City. Uh, many of you um, have probably seen the video on Channel 20, uh, stars our uh, finance director, Craig Freeman. Uh, he talks about sales tax, how important it is to the city. Uh, you know, be sure to shop Oklahoma City, that, that sort of thing. Give some good basic information. Uh, the video you saw at the first of this presentation, again, was from the Oklahoma Tax Commission. It's their public service announcement. And, uh, that's been running uh, on Channel 20 for quite some time, as has the uh, sales tax video. Um, they'll also usually start running around this time of year on regular TV, just again to bring that awareness to citizens that, you know, be aware that you are subject to use tax. One thing I did skip over is that uh, we've also included some articles in our internal uh, city webpage, uh, which our employees see almost every day. Uh, just again, keeping that awareness out there for them. Uh, some of the upcoming initiatives, again, will continue with the, uh, the videos, with the newsletter uh, articles, that sort of thing. Uh, we particularly want to focus in around this time of the year so that uh, employees, uh, citizens are aware that, uh, you know, the use tax issues, you know, during the income tax season. Uh, you may have noticed uh, this morning uh, our public information office worked with us to get that, again, the elephant in the room video posted to the city's website, so it's out there now. We'll also include a, a brief article of covering a lot of the uh, information that we've talked about today. Now, the, the requirement that we talked about earlier of a company having a nexus, a place of business in Oklahoma, <laughs> That comes about as a result of a Supreme Court decision way back in 1992. Of course, the, the, the issue is that in order for that to be overturned, requires literally requires an act of Congress. Uh, Congress would have to implement a, a new law in order to re require those retailers, online retailers, to collect taxes. Um, that's been pushed pretty uh, regularly over the years by both states and cities. Uh, in recent years, we've, uh, a number of the large retailers have come on board with it. Again, for them, it's a fairness issue. They're collecting these sales taxes on our behalf, and they, they feel that the online retailer should, should do the same. There was some legislation introduced last year, I think it's around July, in Congress. Uh, again, there's been some sig pretty significant discussion since then. Uh, the, there was a thought about putting, the, adding this le legislation into some of the early legislation right after the lame duck session, but uh, again, that's when the fifth fiscal cliff discussions came up and it was kind of pushed push back on the back burner one more time. We will continue monitoring the situation. Hopefully, uh, in the near future, we'll, uh, we'll see some legislation that allow, will allow that, uh, those online collections. Um, and again, we'll, we'll keep you aware if there's any changes. That's all I have today. I certainly would be happy to take any questions you might have. I've also included our names and numbers on the uh, handout. So if you happen to come up with a question later and would like to call us, we'd be, we'd be happy to chat with you. But any questions? Just so I understand, on line 20, you're going to take the amount of purchases 
that didn't have the sales tax included, and then you're going to multiply that by a, it depends on what county you're in, you're going to multiply it by a different number. That's exactly right. So Oklahoma County would be? 8.375%. Right. Okay. Um, well, I'd just like to make a request that our IT department put that presentation on a YouTube video or put it on YouTube, two of them, one with the entire presentation and one that just goes through slide 10, attachment, remit, tax with online form, and then stops at that point. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions for Bob? Just for a point of clarification on uh, this brick and mortar. Uh, so if a person has a booth that is established at a certain location, are they required to pay sales tax on the, the, the items that they uh, they sell? If they're selling items in a booth, say at a, a fair or something like that, they are actually required to collect sales tax and remit that to the tax commission. So all the flea markets, the individuals who sell at those? Garage sales. Yep. Beg your pardon? Garage sales. Gun shows? Gun shows, yep. I was just kind of con so a garage sale. A person is required to pay <laughs> sales tax. Yes, yes, sir. They are. They're required to collect sales tax. That's explained to them when they get their uh, uh, permit for a a uh, garage sale. Mm -hmm. Really? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, thank you. All right, you bet.